Hi and welcome to Med Simplified. In this video we will talk about the cell cycle and mitosis. Before starting with the topic I would like to announce that we are launching the Med Simplified merchandise store on teespring.com. Support Med Simplified and get your favorite colors and designs on t-shirts, mugs, phone cases and much more. Visit the link in the description to check it out. Billions of cells die in the human body every day. To make up for this, our body produces billions of new ones. These cells are made from already existing cells. Most of the cells of our body divide except a few ones like the cells present in your heart, the cells present in your muscles and the cells present in your brain. These are known as permanent cells. Leaving them aside, if we talk about the rest of the body cells, they can be categorized into two types: stable cells and labile cells. Labile cells include cells which are constantly dividing like that present in our GIT like mouth intestines etc stable cells don't divide all the time but when required they can like a liver regenerates when half of it is surgically removed for organ donation so liver cells or hepatocytes are good example of stable cells so now let's look at how these cells divide by the process known as cell cycle the cell cycle is a circular pathway in which the cell grows copies its genetic material and splits into two daughter cells these daughter cells undergo the same cell cycle to produce more new cells now if we look at the cell cycle it can be basically divided into two phases the interphase during which the cell prepares for division and the mitotic or the m phase during which the cell actually divides now of course things in our body cannot be so simple so these two phases are further divided into many phases the interphase is divided into three phases g1 s and g2 phase and the m phase is divided into two known as the mitosis also known as karyokinesis and the second phase the cytokinesis As we go deep into this topic you will understand these terms and their meaning in detail and before we talk about these phases in detail i want to clear one important topic that most of the students get confused between the term mitosis and cell cycle and use them interchangeably but they are different now let me help you explain this with an example so here is a cell first it gains nutrition and grows then it divides its nucleus and after that it also divides its cytoplasm to produce two new cells these two cells continue with the same process to produce four more cells and so on so if you look here from this point to this point this whole thing is known as cell cycle and the step here during which the cell divides its nucleus this is known as mitosis So mitosis is actually a part of cell cycle during which the nucleus of the cell divides. I hope I am able to make you understand this clearly. Now let's come back to the phases of the cell cycle in detail and first coming to the interphase. The cell spends its maximum time in interphase. During this phase the cell obtains nutrients and metabolizes them, grows in size and duplicates its DNA. The cell does many other steps all in preparation for the actual cell division which happens in the mitotic phase. The interphase is divided into 3 phases. The G1, S and G2 phase. During the gap 1 phase or the G1 phase, the cell grows and functions normally. The G1 phase is marked by increased protein synthesis and the cell also doubles its original size. Now the cell organelles are produced and volume of the cytoplasm also increases. After the G1 phase the cell can decide whether it wants to divide or not. If the cell senses that cell division is not required it passes into the G0 phase during which the cell remains silent or if it decides to go on with the cell division it passes into the next stage of the interphase known as the S phase. The S phase or synthesis phase is associated with synthesis of new DNA from old one. The cell doubles the number of chromosomes. This happens due to a complex process of copying of DNA to form new DNA from the old one. This is known as transcription. If you want to understand this process in detail, make sure to watch the video on transcription on our channel. Link in the description below. The next phase is known as the G2 phase in which the cell continues its growth and gets ready for cell division. The mitochondria of the cell double and the cell continues to grow until the process of division starts. 
So this was interphase during which the cell grows and prepares for cell division. The next major stage in the cell cycle is the M phase which is the actual division phase. M phase or the mitotic phase is divided into two major phases, mitosis and cytokinesis. Since both these processes are very complex and involve a lot of steps, it would be difficult for me to explain it in a single video. So in this video, we will just talk about the highlights of the M phase, whereas I will make a separate video on mitosis in which I will explain this process in much detail. So the M phase begins when the cell has completed the interphase and is ready for the division. The first part of the M phase is mitosis, which is the step in which the nucleus of the cell divides into two equal and new nuclei. This happens before the cell actually divides, so for a time after the mitosis, the cell has two nuclei. Now briefly talking about mitosis, this phase is divided into four main stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. You can easily remember these four phases by the remaining PMAT. Now during the interphase, the DNA of the cell is present in the nucleus, folded like a long coiled noodle. But this arrangement of DNA is unstable and may lead to problems during the cell division. So during the prophase, the DNA condenses into X-shaped structures known as chromosomes, which can be easily seen with a microscope. This condensation imparts stability to the DNA. The next phase is the metaphase, which is divided into a prometaphase and an actual metaphase. During the prometaphase, the membrane around the nucleus disappears and the chromosomes now lie free in the cytoplasm. In the actual metaphase, the chromosomes line up at the center or the equator of the cell, which is known as the equatorial plane. One important cell organelle that helps this process of division after this are the centrosomes and the microtubules projecting from them. Together these are known as the mitotic spindle. These microtubules help to pull the chromosomes of the cell in two opposite directions. We will study in detail about them in our next video. So after the metaphase, the chromosomes are lined on the equatorial plane and the microtubules get attached to these chromosomes. In the next phase, known as the anaphase, the centrosomes start pulling the chromosomes apart to the opposite poles of the cell. Since the chromosomes were duplicated in the S phase, each pole of the cell receives a full set of chromosomes. In the next phase, known as the telophase, a membrane forms around each set of chromosomes to create two new nuclei. And this completes the process of nuclear division, also known as mitosis. The next phase we have is known as cytokinesis. Cyto means cell and kinesis means movement. In this phase, the single cell pinches in the middle to form two separate daughter cells, each containing a full set of chromosomes within a nucleus. In the first step, you can see that the cell has undergone mitosis. Next, the cytoplasm pinches in the middle, which leads to formation of two new daughter cells. Lastly, we have one important topic left, which is the cell cycle checkpoints. Cell cycle checkpoints are control mechanisms which ensure proper division of the cell. If we look at the interface, we have two important checkpoints. One after the G1 phase known as the G1S checkpoint and the second after the G2 phase known as the G2M checkpoint. As we discussed during the G1 phase, the cell grows and forms new organelles and after the G1, the cell can go into the quiescent stage, the G0, where it does not replicate or it can enter the S phase and proceed with the cell division. Whether the cell will go into the G0 phase or the S phase is decided at the G1S checkpoint. Here the RB or the retinoblastoma gene plays an important role along with cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases. Now, if you look at the interface of the cell in a straight pathway, you can see that the cell has one set of chromosomes in the G1 phase, which gets duplicated to form two identical sets in the S phase of the cell. During the G1S checkpoint, the cell checks whether the DNA of the cell is suitable for duplication or not. If the cell has damaged DNA, which is not suitable for replication, the RB gene remains in an inactive stage 
and the cell enters the G0 or the resting phase. Whereas if the DNA is alright, the RB gene gets phosphorylated or gets activated. This signals various other molecules in the pathway and ultimately the cell enters into the S phase and proceeds with cell division. So the G1S checkpoint checks for DNA damage. The next checkpoint is after the G2 phase known as the G2M checkpoint. As the S phase is associated with duplication of the DNA and formation of a whole new set of chromosomes, it is important to check for any errors in the newly formed DNA which is done at the G2M checkpoint. If the damaged DNA is found, it undergoes repair or the cell undergoes automated cell death known as apoptosis if it is not able to repair the DNA in time. Now, there is one more important checkpoint that takes place in the metaphase of the M phase. Here it is checked whether the chromosomes are arranged on the equatorial plate properly or not. If they are arranged properly, the cell signals to enter into the anaphase during which the chromosomes are pulled apart. This is done to ensure that both the new cells get equal and exact copy of the genetic material. So friends, this was a brief overview about the process of cell cycle and mitosis. As I said, the process of mitosis involves a lot of details which I was not able to discuss here. For that, make sure to watch the next video on mitosis for a complete understanding of cell cycle and mitosis. And make sure to visit Med Simplified on Facebook and Instagram for all the flashcards from this video. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found this video and all the other free educational videos on this channel helpful, you can now support Med Simplified on Patreon.com for literally the price of a coffee cup. This will allow me to fund my work and make more videos like this and will also unlock some cool Patreon only exclusive content like behind the scenes of these videos, upcoming videos, early notifications and exclusive flashcards and handouts. Make sure to subscribe us on YouTube for all the upcoming videos and also make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook for flashcards, notifications and much more.